Um, we're just figuring out some technical stuff because as of right now we don't have video. I wanted to show you a clip of something I've been working on. And uh, actually, there might be something else in there that I might do, but, but we'll, we'll do that. So, um, hang on. I have been told that these chairs are all brand new for this convention and that they have great lumbar support on your back. So please take advantage of your seat. And I'm gonna, I feel like I should, I feel like everybody's playing music these days. Like I should get a guitar, but then I should be taller. <laughs> <laughs> Shorter. Or, hi, welcome to my panel. Um, I'm gonna talk like that the whole time. Does that bother you? Okay, good, because it bothers me. I'm going to stop now. Okay. The sitting idea was not good. I wanted to take advantage of the lumber seats, but I won't. So, um, I'm going to do this. Tell me if I do something horrible, like turn off the mic. I'm going to turn it back on. So, you guys know I am Lisa Ortiz. I am located in New York. So, that's where I do the majority of my static things from. That's where I do the majority of my dubbing. And um, you guys probably know me from a lot of the stuff that I've done. One of the biggest shows that we just did, again, was Slayers. Um, yeah. Oh, there I am. That's so great. Oh. I'll try not to kill you on the way out. And, um, <laughs> so, and, exactly. I won't try to kill you right now. Uh, also, I have done, um, which has also, I was really excited, it has been streaming on Netflix for a while and on Hulu, which has been very cool, which is great because then my family actually got to see it in other places. So. Um, and, uh, oh! You know, I could also talk like this because I was trained on the stage. You can still hear me, right? Production. But no. You can still hear me like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it comes Cool. About four years ago, I started uh, producing and directing things also, so I have done that. I've also adapted scripts. I've kind of done everything over the course of time from the beginning to the end and every method of production that there is. Um, and I'm trying to think of other, of other stuff, like uh, some of my favorite stuff that I've done um, has been... Uh, I still always love a role called Revolutionary Girl Utena, where I did a character called Shiori, which I really love, and uh, Deedlet, which was my first ever professional. I love her. I know, she's so cute. So, um, one of the first professional things that I did, I did do One Piece, Chopper, and One Piece for the show for a while while it was on Cartoon Network, and we did some video games for that. I know it's gone to Texas since, but, you know. Um, do you guys have any questions or anything that you want to know, like basic things? Or do you just want me to yammer on? Because I can do that. Jimmy I am pets. gifted. What? Pets. As a matter of fact, I do. I have two pets. Um, I used to, I'm going to start this way. I used to have two black cats. One was called Misha, and the other was called Stanislav. Now, um, everybody thinks that Stanislav is named Stanislav because of, I'm an actor, and Stanislavski was an actor person. But it's actually named after this, um, this like psychologist, a cool guy, and I just call him Stan anyway, and he's a little stupid. He's a sweet guy, he's really great, but he likes to like drink water out of the ring of the toilet bowl and anything that helps him. We don't see that. Misha, um, who was with me for like 12 years, passed away at the end of last year. She had kidney failure, so. Oh. Thank you for showing no sympathy for my pet. <laughs> you guys are heartless in Miami, what is wrong with you? Um, but I have, I have a, a kitty now who is named, um, uh, I have a little guy who is named Fitz. And the only exciting thing about them is that Fitz, I have a leopard print couch in my apartment, and Fitz matches the leopard print couch, he's one of those cats, and Stan matches the rest of the apartment that's black. <laughs> so um, you have to be color-coded in my house to uh, be on there. Um, so yeah, so I have, uh, I've been dubbing for a while. And uh, does anybody have any like dub questions or about any of the shows or anything about Slayers or things, yeah? How do you create a voice for a character? Okay, uh, that totally depends. Um, a lot of it is the same way that you create it for the stage. So uh, also, like one of the things when you're doing when you're doing the animation, it's kind of a little bit easier because you have the Japanese voices that are there. Like something like Pokemon, like doing um, I do Oshawa in Pokemon also, 
and uh, which is one of the critters, which is very fun. Um, and we actually have to match as best as we can the original Japanese. So they'll hear our voices. We'll come in, and we're trying to we're trying to get as close as possible to them on there. A lot of other times, we just get um, descriptions or pictures or things like that, and you kind of do the best that you can with that. Um, I don't know. Tell me, do, give me a character. All right. How'd you come up with Amy? Oh, well. First of all, you have to listen to her. Then she's in love, and then she has, um, she's so cute, and she's pink. And, um, oh, she's in love. It was, um, that was basically it. Also, we had, we had the original. We got to hear some of the other voices and, and things like that. And it was also, she's, like, so frenetic, and you have so much energy. A lot of those people don't realize, uh, one of the things that, the misconception about voice actors is that you're just using your voice. Anybody who you've ever seen, who no one, no one acts from this point up. People, um, we're waving our arms, we're jumping up and down, we're doing everything you could possibly do. I once had an accident where I stabbed myself with a pencil in the middle of a session. I like smack, I waved my arms and like smacked it against the wall. We usually imitate. A lot of us will imitate the stuff that's on the screen or like things. Yeah, like I. There's I. No, it's really weird because we did a behind the scenes for Slayers at one point and they came in and, and reported me in the booth and they're like, did you do that on purpose for, for the camera that you kept imitating everything that she did? And I'm like, I had no idea that that's what I was doing. You just get used to it, like you kind of physically put yourself into what you are doing. So, um, so that is that. Is that. Yes. Yeah, after about like a decade, how did it feel to get back to the old Slayer's booth? It was awesome. It was really, really awesome. We. Uh, I feel like I'm like I'm like trying new mic. I'm trying new mic positions. It was very awesome. Um, it was the cast, um, Veronica, Eric, and I, and, and everybody else. At that time, Crispin was already on the he was already on the West Coast, but we had heard about it that it was going to be coming back for about a year before it actually came. So we kind of there was a whole year where we were like. Oh, um, uh, did you uh, hear this rumor about uh, Slayers and, uh, you know, whatever? <laughs> and we're like, oh, yeah, you know, you know. And then um, somebody at Funimation had come over to me and was like, so are you going to be available? And I was like, oh, you mean for, yeah, you know, I can just say it, nothing official, just, you know, what do you think about doing more Slayers? And I was like, I think a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was very cool. In a lot of ways, though, it was kind of like coming home to doing something. We were all so excited. Like, Veronica came in, Eric came in, we were like, oh my god, did you hear? We're doing it again. Like, this is so cool. This is like the best thing ever. And um, we, uh, I literally, from, for the whole first season, like, we're talking about how you come up with characters. This is, this is me in the booth. I always sit down when I'm working on her because she has long sessions. This is how every section of Lena started for the first, the first three volumes. Come in, we check, do that. Sound check, do level check. Sit here. Gallery! Okay, I'm ready to go. That's all she ever did. I would put my feet up and it would be like, Gallery! And then just, and then just go with it. So that's the first thing I did on my first day of session back years and years later. And um, there's a funny story. I hate, I hate microphones! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's actually a really funny story when we first started doing it. There's stuff that we had memorized. Like, um, I have the Dragon Slave memorized. It's one of those things that I, I just did even years later. So we came in and we're doing a session and we're looking through the stuff and I come to this and I'm like, yeah, um, this uh, Mark, who's the Mark de who's the director, I'm like, this is wrong. It's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that the dragon's like, it's wrong. He's like, well, but they trans, I'm like, he's like, oh, and I'm like, you're sure? He's like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure it's wrong. It's like, okay, well, we can go look it up. I'm like, oh, no, you don't have to, I'll just tell you what it is. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, I just haven't memorized, I don't know why. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I'll do it later. <laughs> and um, what's funny is, so we did it, I wrote it down, we put it in, and then two days later, we're in the middle of a session recording, and we get a call from Mike Sinter Nicholas. He's like, hey, 
Uh, I'm in the um, I'm in the booth right now with Crispin Freeman, and uh, he's telling me that the Dragon Slave is wrong. And I'm like, tell him we got it already. And he's like, okay. And I'm like, he probably has it memorized too. He probably has all the parts memorized because he's Crispin Freeman. <laughs> but uh, but that was one of the one of the one of my favorite shows to work on. One of the things that you find out, like, it's it's really kind of cool. Um, I did a lot of work for a different different studios over time that were in New York, and also like for kids. People have different feelings about whatever, but we did a lot of good work with there, and you get to meet the different um, the different people, and you kind of turn into a community. You wind up bumping into each other, just like the guys over here. There's a uh, where I also the studio that I work at that I produce is Do Art, so we we do Pokemon, which is one of the things. And um, we've had people who we meet over here fly in, like some of the Texas people have flown in and worked on shows that we've done, so it kind of turns into a, like a little community of things that you do. But um, the first, I didn't actually meet the entire cast of that show and a number of other shows until later. There were people who I knew by their voice, by their voices, like they would say something and I'm like, oh yeah, that's so and so, blah, 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 blah. And then I'd be sitting in a room after having worked with them for like eight months, and someone would speak, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I know you, you're Sonic. It's like, yeah, I am. I'm like, oh, okay, hi, nice to meet you. You look so different when you're all blue. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's Jason, he's actually really, he's very cool, and he does a lot of uh, other stuff for us, too. Is there any other, are there any other questions, or questions about, yes? Um, you were in animation right through all the time. Yes, I was. Uh, no, actually, Animation, animation Runner Chromie I had done, um, I had already been working for quite a few years when we had done that, so they had invited me, like, they, they actually asked me to come in and do that one, which was actually very cool. I like that, I like, it's, it's funny, has anyone, have you guys seen Animation Runner Chromie? Okay, yeah, it's totally what it's like. <laughs> it's totally, like, those types are there, you have to, and now I kind of, having producing more, I kind of have felt like Karomi at times. You're like sitting there like talking to people and being like, no, it's great, you have to work, it's fantastic, and you're giving people pep talks and everything, so it's very fun. Um, but yeah, that was, that was a really, that's a really well done, a really well done one. So, any other, any, and does anybody have any, any other questions about shows or general questions about like acting or, or things? Yes? What has been the weirdest thing you've ever had happen to you on while I was recording? Okay. I will tell you the weirdest thing that I have ever had happen is um, there's there's this thing. We used to work at a place, I used to work at a place, there was a studio called Sonomat. Awesome, awesome group of guys, awesome group of people, really, really cool. We all got along, we had so much fun. This is while we were working on Slayer, so I think while we worked on um, the Maytel story and like a couple of other things. Actually we did we did a lot of stuff over there. Um, and uh, now and then here and there, which was another one, but I'm in the booth, and after we'd be chatting, you get to be friends, you're sitting there talking, dougie, 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 dougie. Instead of telling me not to talk anymore, all of a sudden I'd be like, yeah, so then we went over here, you know, they're talking too, and then all of a sudden I hear, yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> like there's a reverb on my voice, it's coming to me, they're playing it backwards. I'm like, okay, it's like, so, Lisa, are you here? Do you want me to shut up? Because I can do that. I don't have to talk. And uh, so they've done that, like, like done that. And also, um, one of the things, like, after you know people for a while, they start leaving notes for you, or outtakes, or like joke lines for you. So we'd be in about to record, and uh, they did this for a number. Of, one of the I've had them left, I think, from like Sean, from Kristen Freeman, from a whole bunch of guys. Like, you'd be about to say your thing, you hear 3D, beep, 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 beep. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, so, so how are you doing today? That's great, blah, 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 beep, beep, beep. And then, like, the most horrific sentence you've ever heard in your life. And I'm like, ugh. And like, so why aren't you saying your line? I'm like, because I can't go after that. I'm like, a demon beast, what? I'm like, I don't understand what he just said. So, um, so yes, yeah, so people would purposely leave jokes and purposely leave comments and stuff like that to kind of screw you up so that you didn't, you know, you couldn't record or you couldn't do whatever you wanted to do after that. And uh, and that that was really that was uh, 
that's funny. So they would they would leave stuff like that. So we I mean we always had a really good time with them, which is fun. Any other questions? Yes. What's the weirdest thing that's happened to you at a convention? The weirdest thing that's happened to me at a convention. There's there's been weird things, you know, like I've I've had um you know, I've had people, the, the regular room, I've had people follow me around, I've had people go in, I've had, well, actually, this is, this, I, I'm going to say this, the weirdest thing, actually, this is a non-fan thing, I'll tell you the weirdest fan thing, but the, the, the weirdest, like, strange, just bizarre thing that's happened, it's actually here, okay? So, and it's not that weird, but it's kind of weird. I'm, I come in. And, um, you know, this is after I get on the airplane coming in here, and first of all, I have to go through, like, the scary, you know, the scary, like, like, we're going to take a full photo of your body under your clothes, and it's just really weird and awkward, so you do your full scan, then I get out of that, and they're like, we have to pat you down this. I'm like, okay, they're like, well, can you just do this here, and like, and then we have to rub you with paper. I'm like, okay, that's really weird. I'm not explosive, I'm okay. I come out, I go through that, get over here, they pick me up, I get to the front desk at, like, 11.30 at night, and, um, they say to me, they're like, oh, Lisa, Miss Ortiz. I'm like, yeah, they're like, we have, uh, we have packages for you. And I'm like, packages? I didn't, what kind of packages? And at first I think, oh, maybe it's like a welcome to the convention thing. I'm like, okay, cool. They're like, yeah, actually we have two packages for you. I'm like, okay. All right, yeah, they just go, go to the desk and sign for them. I was like, okay, sign for them. Come in, 15 minutes later, I get a knock on my door. Bellhop comes to the door with this big tray full of like 12 boxes. And I'm like, um, these can't be from, they're like from Land's End, Oshkosh Bagosh, like the weirdest stuff I have ever seen. And I'm like, I really don't think these are for me. They're like, oh no, Lisa Ortiz, these are for you. And I, he's like, he's like, can I bring them in here? I'm like, but they're not for me. He's like, well, but you signed for them, so here, take them. And I'm like, I didn't, this is like a weird, bizarre spending spree. And then I look at the table, I'm like, no, no, see, these are for Luisa. Luisa Ortiz. They're for Luisa, that's what it, that's what it says. And they're like, yeah, Lisa. I'm like, no, 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 Lu Luisa, with a U. They're like, well, I can drop them off for you. And I'm like, Luisa's gonna be pissed. <laughs> I'm like, because she apparently did some online shopping here. And uh, so I kept all the boxes, they're all my size, how do you like it? No. <laughs> but that's like, that, that was just like a weird hotel thing that, that happened. And I thought that was a really weird, because at first when, when they were talking, I talked to Todd, how Horn came in with me, and I'm like, oh, did you get a package? And he's like, no. And I'm like, he's like, I think it's just a Lisa thing. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, should I check and see if it ticks? Should I like, like, do I throw it across the room? Do I shake it? He's like, well, if powder comes out, you know, just, you know. He's like, then it might be a stalker trying to kill you. He's like, but chances are if they wanted to actually murder you, then they wouldn't send you a package because, you know, that would ruin the fun. I was like, thanks a lot, Todd. I hate you. But <laughs> Louisa loves you. Um, but the weirdest, I've had weird things that I've had to assign. Like, uh, bone balls are cool. I once had this guy do some weird, um, weird artwork, let's call it. <laughs> and uh, he didn't come up and he's like, would you, you know, like, he actually didn't actually say anything, he was just, he just put it there. And I was like, <laughs> none of these are my character. I'm like, this is weird. But here, you can have this. <laughs> No, um, but uh, so that's that's mostly the stuff. Mo mostly, like fans have been awesome, and everybody's been like really, really cool, and you know, and that's that's been very, that's always been very good. Do you guys, do you guys, um, are any of you like people who think about acting or doing anything like that, or have you ever? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Have you? Uh, are you guys in school and anything? You just, you just got, no, just in like college or anything like that, so you're, you just got out? Okay. And you? You what? Okay, cool, cool. We have a guy who's an animator who's in there now, like one of our interns who's working over there. Because um, that's where I, that's how I started. I started, I was a theater major, but I was still in school when I started doing voiceover stuff. 
Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons also, like tomorrow I'm doing a panel about getting into it because a lot of people ask questions. But um, I had actually I had actually started doing anime while I was in school, and I had taken a year off because I had mono. And yeah, I took a year off because I had mono, and during that time, I had, um, it's a whole story, I'll tell it again tomorrow, but um, had my car, I had it home, my car didn't work, I had mono, I couldn't work, my car couldn't work, nothing happened. And um, my brother takes my car, and I wake up one day, my car's missing. And uh, it turns out that he takes my car and he drops it off somewhere, and my battery doesn't work, all this stuff is going on. Total like happenstance of what happened. And I call him up, I'm like, hey man, what is, where's my car? He's like, you know your car doesn't work. I'm like, that's why I told you yesterday not to take my car. What are you, an idiot? That's how I got, that's how I make characters up. Dealing with my family, that's what it comes from. But, um, yeah, exactly. But, uh, he took my car. I wound up finding a friend of his who had left it somewhere. I we went on this whole big, like, adventure trying to find this car. And during the course of that, I found out that this guy worked at one of the animation studios, and um, he needed somebody to come in for an audition. At the time, I was like, well, why don't you bring in me? And they did, and that's how, and then I booked, that's when I booked out um, Deep Light from Lotus War. So I was still in school. So that's why I, I tell people, it's like, you know, there's always, it's hard to do, it's hard to keep doing after a long time, like I've been doing it for a very long time, and you know, I do do other stuff, I do other acting and other theater, and I write and I produce and do other things, but, you have to start sometime. So everybody is at that point. So yeah, so if you have a chance, come tomorrow. Yes. Out of these layers cast, who was the funniest the funniest person to work with? The director, who was Tony Spiller. Now the rest of the cast was awesome. Eric Eric Stewart is hysterical. It's been funny. People were in there, but um for the beginning season, one of the one of the one of the directors for the season was this guy called Tony Salerno, and he was hands down absolutely ridiculous. Like he would come in and and do jokes, and a lot of times he's he's one of he's um. There's been a couple of different directors. A lot of times people don't hear about them because you don't get to meet them up here. But uh, everybody's been uh, very cool. So we would go back and forth and do jokes back and forth. It made it a lot of fun doing there. So he was very funny. Um, I don't know. I mean, everybody was. Mark was. Mark was funny. He was. He directed last time. He was intense. That's the thing. Also, we're in there. We see each other afterwards. When you're in there, it's by yourself. You're the only one who's in the room, and you're kind of talking. You spend a lot of time just talking to yourself, and people don't think you're crazy. It works out well. And then you get free seats on the subway when people sit down next to you and you're still talking to yourself. So I suggest that highly. Um, but yeah, no, he was one of the funniest ones. Um, uh, Veronica is very funny. Um, it, I mean, we had a pretty good cast when we actually did get together. One thing that I always would have loved to do is actually have everybody in the room together. I've worked on a couple of stories where we get to do that, where all the actors actually get to record together. And uh, I think that would be like, very fun. If we all got together, if we could ever get like the bunch, a couple of the main characters in the cast together, it would kind of be fun to do like a reading, like a radio play reading of the show, so you could kind of see us interacting that way. But, yeah. yeah. Oh no, he was funny. He was a, I noticed um, from the new series, his voice changed a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there's a for the new series they actually used a different actor. And that was um, that was a choice from the thing. Also, he was either not available or there's a lot of times people wonder like what happens when cast members switch. Like this in this case, I think there was um, there was a contract issue that we had, and he wasn't able to do it there, or he was unavailable. So there because it has been it has been a couple years. Not everybody's around. Some people had moved. The people who moved to LA were fine, but. Um, Sometimes people don't come back, you know. So, uh, yeah. So, like, a moment for Zellos. Okay, the moment's over. Um, what else? So, question. Yes. Oh, you're just, we're scratching the back of your head. Is you, I'll have a question. Why is your head so itchy?
No, I'm kidding. I um, have an answer. I don't know. Okay, that's good. But I was going to ask you, uh, what was your, how'd you come up with Serenity? Serenity is my, um, well, first of all, I got to see her and do the whole thing, but Serenity is sort of what I call, there's a, there's a couple of different types of voices that people have, like you want to have a bunch of things on call. As a voice actor, you want to know, there's, there's, um, as a, as a woman, you're either, you have your mom, like a mom voice, you, you always do personalize them for different things, but you have a sort of nice, you have a small, like, little kid, like, that's on your demo, or, like, your boy voice, or things like that, like, whatever you want to do, but serenity is sort of, like, my sweet, young, like, what people would, and don't get weird about this, people class would call it your, your Disney, like, heroine, like, your good, sweet, like, just very cool, um, uh, sweet, Heroin. She was very cool, and uh, and she has a little spunk to her at different times, but um, but yeah, and I dyed my hair pink. <laughs> That's what I did. I dyed my hair pink, and um, whenever uh, Wayne Grayson, who played uh, my brother, was in the room, I would just scream Joey at him. That's how I came up with the character. And anyone who doesn't believe that, talk to me after. That's good. No, seriously, any other any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally would. Magic Users Club is an awesome, awesome, awesome show. Yeah. Um, there's so many, there's so much stuff. Like, that's one of the things that people don't, uh, people don't think of when they're thinking also. Of, of when, you're, when you're acting regularly, you're doing, if you're doing a theater piece, you're doing anything out, you fall in love with what you're doing at the time, and you fall in love with all these characters, and then they finish. And, um, you know, you, at least, like, at least what's cool about doing a lot of the anime stuff is that you can watch it afterwards. And there's still people who are, like I said, like I started Slayers a long time ago, and people are still being introduced to, introduced to it now. And then, I mean, I have the new ones that have come out, but that's kind of a cool thing, because there's a few things that you can work on that even, like, ten years after the fact, people can come and, like, experience for the first time. So I think that's kind of cool. Yes? Um, how much does legal streaming have an effect on the adult uh, line scene? Has it had any effect? Um, legal streaming, you yes. know, as far as uh, as far as things like like um, like streaming shows online and, and things like that. And most of the time, I mean, they have different uh, licensing agreements. I think for certain things, I don't know the exact effects that it's had. I know the effects that illegal streaming have had, which is don't do it because it keeps things from being brought over and it, it lowers. Um, lowers a bunch of things, but the thing that, that legal streaming does do is it sort of gives a little bit more of a of an audience, like people have more of a chance to watch things. I don't know how they calculate that. I'm not actually sure how that's affected it. For me personally, it doesn't affect what I do. Um, we, once we do, once on my end, once I make, once I do the show, once I do whatever it is, then it's done. It has nothing, I don't, I don't see any, I don't see for a lot of the stuff that I do residual, I don't see work after that. I just basically do the show and then it's done and then I hope people are watching it. That is what I <laughs> that's what I do. So I don't know business wise what it's done. Um, any other questions? Yes. What would we be watching if the video worked? What? what? Oh, I was gonna play there's a there's a lot of people ask me what I've been doing. I do um, Obviously, like for anime, a lot of anime work has moved. There's still stuff that's going on in New York, but a lot of it is also going on on the, on the West Coast. So I do other stuff besides just regular anime. I do do animation, I do commercial stuff, I do audiobook stuff. So if the video worked, I was going to show you. There's a project that, um, an animation that I had done that I'm in, which is uh, called Roger the Rickshaw, it's an Indian animation. They're trying to bring more of Indian culture out. And uh, I produced it, so I oversaw the music on it. I saw the uh, sound effects. We kind of, we did a pre laid dub to it, so people got to hear it beforehand. And I play this, uh, it's for little, little kids. For little, little kids. And I play this big southern school bus and um, this other little girl. And actually, do you have, is that, is that queued up over there? Yeah. If you just, you just want to play a snippet of it, I think it's queued up to the to the spot. You'll hear me talking to myself, so.
imagine a big yellow school bus, big huge, it's all about cars, it's all about like cars and what are, what, there's like these rickshaws which are these three wheel cars. Because that's, I'm, I'm doing a lot more audiobook stuff and a lot of other, a lot of other things that we work on, so. You are Bobby. Gee Bobby, you're always right, on time. Down. Never a minute late. How do you do that? I've been taking children like you to school for years now, Adina. I even took some of your mommies and daddies. She was going to little kids. I want you to grow up smart. That means I not think that's, that's that you that's be scary. late for school, little miss. Okay. Yeah, so I was going to show you a clip from there. It's for little, little kids. So, and the way that they animated it. In that case, we did all the pre-lit. For that one, it was an ADR. Um, if people don't know the difference between that, a lot of uh, anime is ADR. It means that the picture is already animated, the um, music is already there, and they have an original cast in a different language. So you're either matching that or changing it. For prelay stuff, which is when you get just a blank script and you can just create your characters and do whatever you want to do, that's, it's, it kind of gives you a little more freedom because you can really make character voices and do things like that and kind of like create stuff. But um, that one is for little kids. So they had had the original cast that they put in there was just what's called a scratch track. We did it from, um, it was all Indian cast, so you couldn't understand. They spoke very, very slow. So when we got the picture back, everybody had to talk very, very slow to match the flap for everything, which worked out for my school bus. But um, but yeah, so it's I mean those are those are things that you don't you don't think about. After that, we did we did the stuff and they animated to us, and that was a very cool sort of process. Yeah, it was it was real, but that was that's fun. It, it's and we got to do, like um, we composed all the where I were we composed all the music for it, did all the sound of it. It's much more interesting if you see it, but it's totally like little 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 kids. But that's a lot of the stuff that I've been that I've been doing also besides the anime and things. Um, any other questions? Yes. Okay. In our acting classes, what we usually do is we have uh, improv sessions and other ways to practice. Do you have that as a voice actress too? That's actually a really interesting uh, question. Yeah. No. What? What you're winding up doing, voice acting, the difference between voice acting and regular acting is in regular acting, you rehearse. You have time. Voice acting is, for the most part, cold reading, which means that you're going in. Um, if anybody who's an actor knows the term, you have a term called cold reading, which means that you walk in the door, you pick up the script, and you read it. And that is your performance. You have four or five takes. You have the director telling you what's going on. So um, you don't necessarily see the script. Sometimes you have in my earlier ones, sometimes they'll send you the script, you can kind of look it over and prep it. But you are basically, you are basically on the spot. It's more like improv. It's more like just go in there and go. You have to know what you're gonna do, you have to know like what your character's gonna sound like, who you have to look at it and say, I think that this person is six years old. I've had people come in like, you're six years old, you're kind of bubbly, and you're blue, go. And that's it, and that's what you're doing on your audition to get your job. So you, all the stuff that you're doing and the improv and all that other stuff, you're coming in with that from somewhere else. Like, uh, you know, like that, the girl running around, like that is a potential, no, that's a, like a kind of, and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go over here. I really like it over here. But like, <laughs> that's what I do. I, 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 my rehearsal is literally those kind of things. Seeing somebody around here, going there, taking acting classes, taking improv classes, seeing like we, um, I lived in an apartment in the city, like this is New York stories, with opera singers and actors. Okay, so first it was like the, it was like a European youth hostel because there was all opera singers coming back and forth, but the actors, we'd all, we'd get together, we kind of like improv stuff. So everything had a voice, especially if you're doing, you're doing cartoons, your chair had a voice, your cat had a voice. Like every opportunity that you had to give something a voice, you did it. Because when you went into an audition, it might be like there was a, um, I had a cat named Chester. He's like, hi, how are you, I'm Chester. And he would always, this big orange, I can't even do his voice, it was a while ago, but he had, he was like this big orange tabby. 
he had a character that was a voice like um, I did. Has anyone seen a show called Magical Derby Me? Um, okay. Yeah. He's there, he wants, but there's a there's a there's a character in it that's Tina, who's this blob who's based on a couple of different things. But she comes and she sounds like that. Okay. So these are voices that you want like you wind up doing, but that's what you do. The, the for voice acting, your process, you are and this is one of the things that people have to have to like the change from regular acting to that is Everything comes from you outside and you bring it in and you have like 10 seconds go to give them what they want. And then when you get your script, most of the time when we're working on something, we direct we depend heavily on the director. Because I walk in the door, I may have had three other jobs that day. I know my character, I know what they're doing, but I have no idea what's happening. So it's all up to the director to tell me what's going on. I have the picture in front of me to work off of. I have the um Mommy, yeah, she's going to something. I'm going to bring her into something at some point. Um, but um, you, uh, that's what you have. And that's why you'll see not everybody who does, not everybody who is a, even a really good actor is very good at voice acting, especially in, in the animation and for the dubbing portion. If you're doing um, a prelay cartoon where you're sort of coming in, you have time to develop your character, you have time to do all that stuff. If you are doing, if you're doing a, a dub, most of the time you came in for the audition, you had 10 minutes to sit down, look at a picture of the character, look at the copy. If there was a voice reference, they'll play it for you. And then you've just kind of got to wing it and bring it to life. And that's where it's important. You ask your director, you're like, okay, what's going on? Who is this? What's the relationship to this person? Who is that? And basically, bam, 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 you get it out. It's a skill that you pick up. And while you're doing that, you have to match the flat. So it's like you have, like you have to put all these things to it and you have two seconds go. And you're looking at the picture, you're trying to, yeah, it's, it's a coordination thing. You'll find a lot of people who are really good at it are musicians, are very good with the timing of doing stuff because they're used to listening to beats and doing things like that. Because that's just what, this is what I hear, I'm like, two, three, talk. Which I'll show you guys, I think they're doing a dubbing panel tomorrow, but um, I'm also doing one on Sunday morning. And you'll see like all the stuff that, that kind of goes into it. But that's all you have. Like all these characters that people have come up with in there, some of them have, if, if they've been lucky enough to write on the show or see the show and stuff like that beforehand, a lot of times you'll see the first few and then you're kind of, you're creating it as you go along. So that's where, that's where the skill comes in. And that's something you kind of have to practice, but improv is great. Doing improv is one of the best things that you can do. I mean, and also, and also training. It's like, I don't know if there's anybody that's singers. You don't, you don't learn to sing on the job. You do your drills, you do all your stuff, you know how to sing, and then you walk in, and then you can kind of do whatever you want. But you have to have all the training and the craft and stuff like that beforehand. But yeah, it's weird. People don't, you don't think about it, and you don't think like, I may do um, an episode of, an episode of Slayers for me, which was talk heavy, was maybe four hours, four or five hours of straight talking. And you'll do the takes over and over again. You get one try, okay? Hey, how you doing? Oh my gosh, Gary! Okay, that didn't fit. Oh my gosh, Gary! Okay, faster. Oh my gosh, Gary! Okay, so you would do that. You're doing all these things for like four hours straight. The longest session that I ever had, I think, was six hours for one half-hour episode. That's my work. No, actually, I take that back. I did do eight hours once for one episode. And let me tell you something: you do not want to do that all in a row because you can fry out your voice. And, but that's why, that's why you train. That's why you do exercises, why you learn how to breathe. It's like all this, like, everybody, you know, it sounds stupid, like, learn how to breathe. You're all like, I'm not dead, I know how to breathe. Um, but you know how to breathe in order to talk for a long time and sustain your voice and keep your voice the same. I know um, there's a girl, uh, a really talented actress that I have, um, that I've worked with a lot called Erica, who did a show, um, I'm sorry, not Erica. Um, uh, Lena Christensen, she did, um, she played Luffy in our version of One Piece. She um, has been on Broadway. She's done a whole bunch of stuff in other places. 
Um, she's a amazing comedian and a singer. She has a huge, versatile voice. She's, um, I think she was in a production of, uh, I forget, I think Little Woman, but she did, she was on Broadway doing a show, Singing High. She's a soprano. The end of doing eight episodes of that show, she was an alto. She could not reach higher notes that she had. So eventually she had to go back. And I, I actually worked with like the voice that I was just like, the, the singer voice where it's going like this. I actually had to train with my vocal coach at the time so that I didn't blow out my voice. Like you can, you do stuff like that. Like you don't think about it. But um, I mean, and I'm not, I'm gonna say it's fun. It's totally like, it's totally fun and it's great to do. But, um, but yeah, so that's, so that's like you learn all that stuff, so. And we'll yap some about that tomorrow too if you want. Who else, any other questions? Yes. Um, as a voice actor, mm -hmm. how well do you have to keep your, your voice like well, you know, protected by any health? Extremely well. Um, if you, the, the, the weird thing about this also, like I said, it's cold reading, is if you, um, there have been cases where I've been chosen for a job and I've been sick and they're gonna report on a Tuesday and I'm sick on that Tuesday and someone else gets the job. You also have to make sure that you can um, reproduce whatever you're doing. Like that's, like that I joke about the, you know, like the Lena thing going like that, but that's, what you, depending on how you do things, I tend to be a very physical actor. So even like I've done, um, I've done stuff here and I remember sitting behind the stage like one of those, we did one of those screen things and then people did the voice and the other actors were sitting there I think it was like Vic and like my tape. They're like, it's so funny to watch you do that because your whole body changes and like your position of how you do things changes. You don't realize it, but how you physically hold yourself affects your voice and it affects what you can do. And uh, so one of the big, the most important things to do is like keep yourself, like to, to properly do voice stuff and keep your voice fine is you want to do stretching before you show up, before you show up. You'd want to do warm ups, like do like a half hour warm up to make sure you can reach all your voice stuff. Uh, people would used to make fun of me because of my roommates, because I would come out, I had a friend stay with me and I'm like, nom, 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 nom. like these are sounds that I would make before and they're like, what the hell are you doing in there? You're being attacked by like a small like legion of mice. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm, I'm warming up my voice. But you don't, you don't realize that. Also, there's tricks that people have. Um, one of the best things for your voice is apple juice. Apple juice, it, uh, it lubricates your pores. There's, um, there's like slippery elm tea. There's ways if you have a, because one of the things that we have to do is, if you know like if you have a, a, a throat infection and you sound like a frog, for about 75% of that, there is a way to get over that. You might have a booking for an hour. And you may not want to cancel that because they can't or they have to make their deadline or it's going to go on air. So you have to know what you're going to drink. You have to know what you're going to do. And you have to know if your voice can last that long. You know, so you're going to, these are things that you don't like. Like you may complain, you have a job and you have a fever and you have a cold and you sound like a frog. And you're like, I don't want to use my day off, so I'm going to go in. And that sucks. But when you're freelancing and your voice is your job, and you just got a cold, and now you can't work for two weeks? That's kind of, it's crazy. So you do want to take good care of your voice. You don't want to, you know, scream. I, I can't say that you don't want to do things like smoke or do things like that, because you shouldn't. It's bad. If you're a woman, don't smoke, unless all you want to play is this woman. But um, when we did, I, I will never forget this, and this was one of the first jobs I did, but we did, uh, Lotus, is you guys familiar with Lotus Core? Yeah. You know Gim? Yeah. The, uh, the dwarf guy, he's got like this dark, he's got this like really thick, raspy, very good. I would come in and hear his voice, I'm like, do you have a great voice? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I smoked two packs of cigarettes and then I drank and stayed up till four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, okay, that works for you, that doesn't work for me. Because I would sound like you. <laughs> and you already have that job. And uh, it's a weird voice for a lady. But yeah, so you wanna you wanna really take care of your 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 body is your instrument is what like we basically say, and you don't realize it, and you and this goes for anybody. I mean, this also goes for you guys out here too to understand is that you don't have to be like you don't have to be Adonis, you don't have to be like working out all the time, 
But what you do have to do is you have to be able to control your body. You have to be able to like stretch it out. You don't want to have, if, you're, if your voice or your throat is tight, um, you're going to not be able to do, you're not going to be able to do a voice and you're not going to be able to do it for a long time and you could permanently damage yourself. So most of the people who are doing it are warming up. Or they're, if, they're, if you're working a lot, you're already warmed up. Some people would just talk for a long time, like I am right now. Um, it just depends, and it depends on your range. So yeah, you do. does anybody have any other questions about that or anything? I, I mean, I find this stuff fascinating, so you guys tell me if you want to put it on to anything else, and you know, let me know when I'm in time. You question? He's wrong. But yeah, I know why he thinks that, because there was a listing of something that was on yeah. there. But no, I was not. Um, but uh, if I was, I would be very happy, because I would probably be getting a nice paycheck. <laughs> so since they haven't paid me, I have to assume that I was not in it. But, uh, but yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't done that. I have not myself done, up until this point, um, a lot of on-camera work. I have mostly been like stage and voice, and that was a... That was a choice that I did for a while. I mean, I might, I might change that at some point, but that's kind of where I was. I fell into doing a lot of voiceover when I first came out of school. And it was one of those things, like I would come in and people came into the studio and saw me, and then they would bring me in for auditions for other stuff, and then I would go and people kind of got to know my name. And um, so I kind of was went down that path with, with a lot of anime that I had done for a long time. And, and things like that, but um, don't rule it out. I just, that's why I'm also, I'm more New York. A lot of the people who are doing film stuff, like a lot of the Texas people who are doing more film have gone to LA. And um, I'm not I'm against LA, I like LA. It's very tropical and nice. It kind of reminds me of Long Island with palm trees, and if none of you are from Long Island, you don't know. It just does. Um, any other questions? Questions about stuff? Yes? Yes. First of all, let me ask you, when you say you're an actor, are you more straight, comedic? What kind of stuff do you do? Uh, I, I, I do comedic, and I also do draw, uh, musical, and dramatic. Uh, so you are so you are a singer? Yeah. Okay. That's that's really great. I'm not. You don't have to be a singer, but that's actually a very good thing. It's good to do your regular singing warm-up. Warm up. You can tell that I haven't, and I've been, I haven't slept that much today. I tell you, I went to the beach this morning. It's good. I probably should have slept in. But um, one of the things that I do is I do for myself, it's slightly different. You're, what voice part are you? Uh, tenor, tenor. Okay, great. You, uh, you have, so you have a pretty good range then. Yeah. You can go, you can, but you can hit tenor stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to warm up the top of your voice. You're going to do your regular warm up that you do. You're going to want to warm up your chest voice and all this other stuff that's here. Um, a lot of the stuff that we'll also do is articulation exercises. Like, you know, like the typical stuff, like if you're singing, you do like the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, that stuff. You're going to do that to a certain point and then throw it away. I do, like I, okay, um, this is either going to be interesting or horribly. I literally do, I, I warm up the front, I also warm up my palate up over here. I have a specific voice and that's not going to change. I have a broad range, but there are certain things that you have and it's a good thing if you're doing voiceover. People, people hire you based on your voice. I'll sit there right now, like, the bottom of my voice isn't so warmed up right now. So I would, if I was doing that, like, I'm, I'm what's called a spinto. Um, I'm a, I'm a soprano, which I didn't know while I was, when I first started doing theater, I thought it was an alto, but I have a pretty good range. It takes me to, like, fully warm up. I would say it takes me, like, half hour to 45 minutes to get, like, to my full range. And then, um, I do, because this stuff is all different, like there's placement exercises. This is, you know, this is, this is like in the character stuff so that you know. Like if I'm going to do this part of my voice, I'm focusing my voice right now, actually not where you think it is, it's actually focusing on the back and between my shoulder blades. And then if you want to close your nose palette, then you could go like this and you could get a voice that goes like that. If you want to play around with what you can do, 
I, because I am a woman and there's a lot of younger people, I do a lot of teen voice stuff that focuses over here. I do a lot of um, mouth exercises as far as putting placement up over here. It really just, it really just depends. Uh, but do your regular warm-ups and do a lot of uh, love of talking stuff. And then what you want to do is if you want to do voice, like vocal stuff, is you're going to want to practice what you can do with your voice, where you can put the sound. If you can do like a high, airy voice on the top of your head, that's fine, as long as you can make somebody hear it. So you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna do all that. So if, if you're doing comedy, it's the same thing as making up different characters and putting it into things. But I would say stick with your regular vocal exercises. And um, one of the things that we do is if there's something called. Um, I had to, in order to save my voice from the other thing, is I had to do uh, forward like what we did. Like I would sing, and then I would go wee 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 wee. Open up over here so that I didn't destroy my voice on the back. It's, you can talk to me afterwards and like I'll, I'll talk to you because um, I don't know how that is. I don't know if we're, where are we in time? Are we, what are we doing? I don't know, does anybody know what time it is? 4.50. Four fifty. okay, we're good. Do you have another, any other questions? Either after later or other things or, you know, about um, anything else or show or whatever? Yes. Uh, this how we're living in Florida. Mm -hmm. There, um, I don't know if they have any dubbing stuff. This stuff would be, and I'll talk more about this tomorrow. I mean, I do know um, there's a lot more acting stuff. There's a lot of theater. I have a friend of mine who is now doing. Um, she's now doing film, and she's done some voiceover stuff in in the city. But she came down here. She came down to Florida for a while, and she did regional theater. And that's the thing that I would say is if you're going to, you know, check out the theater, check out stuff that's going on over here, and call radio stations or stuff like that if you want to try and see if you can do some voiceover. There's always local talent agencies and things like that that you can look into. But if you're looking specifically, which most people are to do, like if you're looking here, like to do anime or something, you're going to want to be where the work is happening. Yeah, well, yeah, Texas has a lot of. Texas has a lot of stuff going on, LA has a lot of stuff going on, New York has stuff going on, but not as much as in that department anymore as it did in the past. You can still do a lot of stuff over there, but you're gonna do, you're gonna broaden up a whole bunch of stuff. Any other questions? Yes. Um, as, as a high school student, mm -hmm. I've done my share of acting in my conversations. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. Seriously, the, the thing that you want to do is, do you take vocal classes? Come tomorrow, come tomorrow. Come, if you can get up tomorrow, and if I can get up tomorrow, come tomorrow. That's like the biggest thing. I'm telling you, and I say that, share my pain, because it's early. But, um, but show up, and one of the things you want to do is do you take voice classes. Do you um, do, you do like uh, breath control things to maintain? Is it a matter that you lose your accent? You lose the accent or you lose the character? What you have to do with the voice like that is go find the novel, okay? And one of the things that you want to do is that you want to get the novel. And um, you, the, the thing that you don't know is you have to scientifically figure out is how this accent works, okay? What are the vowels? What are the things that you do? And then read the book. And you're going to get some words that all of a sudden you're like, so I'm reading this book and I went to the store. And you're like, okay, that combination of words you're going to have to work on. But like seriously, the, the problem is, is that when people do accents, they usually do an accent that started off with things that they know. Or sentences that they know. Or things that they've heard all the time. And then they get to something that they don't know. Or a word that's new. And you can't maintain it. And also, you're working on an accent, you want to use that, you want to do something with it, make sure you're good. Listen to it over and over again. Make sure you have it down pat because, and you're going to want to surround yourself with the length, like if it's an accent like that, like a Russian thing, you want to surround yourself with some Russian stuff. Listen to it over and over again. There are vocal dialect books and there are tapes. 
I've, um, for performances and things that I've had to do, sometimes I've listened to tapes, or I'll even, you can find on YouTube, listen to people who are native speakers, imitate them, see what you can do. But you have to be kind of careful with them because stuff, accents are different for the stage than they are sometimes for regular real life stuff. In New York or something like that, they're gonna get somebody who does the accent anyway, unless it's for an anime, we'll do stuff. I just had, we just worked on an animation that was a Russian project originally. And um, we did the English, we did an English dub of it, and it, um, it screened in Annecy, and it, it, which is a, a European film festival, and it screened in a couple of things. The woman came in from Russia, we did all the accents that were in there, and she was very, very particular with French. We had someone who does multiple French accents. She doesn't speak French, but she does a lot of French work in New York. And the woman was like, no way, she doesn't sound French. Because she knew French. And, um, you know, I can't, it, there's a difference between an accent that's passable and an accent that's spot on. And a lot of time, what that is, is practice. You know, but, but seriously, read a book in the accent. Read a book in the character. Pick up a magazine and like, read the news. It's the most boring thing that you could possibly think of, but in the character. And let the character be bored with it. Like, oh my gosh, okay, so uh, serious. It's so good for you, I lose 20 pounds, and really, I write this on the special K, I hate this box. You know, whatever you have to do, but like, play with it, but practice. I mean, practice and maintain it, but, but find the words you don't know. That's going to help you. How did I get what? Um, I told you a little bit before, I went in for an audition based on someone who I found who was interning somewhere. And I was a theater major at the time. I walked in, I was still in school. I came like off the street. No one knew who the hell I was. Pardon my French. No one knew who the heck I was. And um, I went in and I auditioned. And that's, that's what I did. And actually, I did, um, for the first thing I did, my first, like my best Disney voice, I was like, I'll try this. And I had always imitated stuff online and done that, but I had theater background, I had experience. And I went in, and they actually chose me for two roles, but didn't want to double cast me. So, and from there, people just sort of, people just sort of got to know. If you're, you're gonna need to get exposure, you need to, like it is a lot of time and energy and doing into that, and I'll talk more about it tomorrow. Show up, just wake up. I'm gonna just show up. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you. That's the biggest rule. Show up. You know. I think so. Okay, we're done? I think I've got a good last question. Oh, good. For you there. Um, have you worked on any personal or independent projects lately? Not something necessarily studio has hired you, but something you could put together or just independent um, that you would like to talk about. I just... I, I, there are stuff that I've, I've written, I also do write, and I write plays, I write uh, 10 minute plays, and I, which is how I started off, and then I, I write other pieces, so I had worked for a while with a composer, we've been working on a musical, and I usually, and I recently just started, well we're going to start, I think next week, with another writer of mine, and we're going to start a piece on there, and hopefully, I took, um, when I started producing and I started working over at Dort, I took some time off, I, I still was doing voiceover stuff and things that were happening, but I kind of focused on that for a little while. So, if everything goes well, I'm supposed to have a cabaret coming out at the beginning of next year. Small kind of thing just to start out, but um, I got the group of people together and then we're gonna see what we do. So, yeah, you kind of have to. Like, that's the other thing is that if you're performing, it's something, it's gotta be something that you love and you always have to find a way to kind of touch stone and just get back to what you want to do. Even if it's just goofing around and, and doing all that stuff, you want to do that, so. So we'll see, I'll tell you how, I'll tell you how it goes. Yeah, first meeting. Like wrangling cats in a bag, but we'll see. So cool. So that's, that's it, I mean, I do have other, like, other projects and stuff that are going out, but then I have that stuff going on. So thank you guys for coming, there's nothing else. You guys who have questions, show up tomorrow and we'll talk a little more in depth. Okay? And I can get you, give you an idea of what you need to do for yourself and then the heck you're going to go through to try and get it out there. Alright, thanks a lot guys.